Welcome back. And in part two of the show tonight, a story that was a labor of love for our film reviewer, Gary Pollard. The Hong Kong International Film Festival is featuring, among other things, a short retrospective of the work of Polish filmmaker Christoph Zanussi. So, Gary, what's so special about Christoph Zanussi? I think one of the main things is at a time when a lot of the other Polish film directors were trying to deal with politics, Poland was under sort of Soviet control at the time, he was trying to go beyond politics and deal with other issues that were deeper and more fundamental, like morality, ethics, etc., etc. And for me, one of the first films that I saw of his was a film called Illumination, which I saw in my early 20s. And that was very much about, it was about a young physicist who was like trying to make sense of life and trying to come to terms with life and death and domesticity and, you know, the thwarting of his dreams and everything. To me, it was actually an incredibly profound film. And it was in my top 10 list of films that meant the most personally, most to me personally for so many years. So uh, it was an incredible treat to be able to uh, actually talk to somebody who'd made one of my 10 favorite films ever. In 1979, Christoph Zanussi played a small part in Christoph Kieslowski's second film, Camera Buff. He was, by this time, already an acclaimed filmmaker, known for films like his 1972 semi-autobiographical Illumination, about a young physicist looking for certainty but confronting the uncertainties of life. Other Polish filmmakers, like Andrzej Wajda, were more overtly political, but like Kieslowski, Krzysztof Zanussi was dealing with more complex moral issues. His 1971 family life reflected a disintegrating society in its story of an engineer who returned to his family after a long absence, only to discover that his relatives are mostly alcoholic, suicidal or insane. 1977's Camouflage is about an idealistic young language teacher trying to resist the cynical worldview of an older professor. In 1980s, the constant factor, a young engineer clashes with the corrupt society around him. In his latest film, Revisited, Zanussi, now 70, returns to the protagonists of those three movies to see how they've changed in the intervening years. And very often the public, whenever I travel with my films, people are sometimes ask this question, what they know that the characters are fictitious, that they have been created. But they ask, what would have they done later, especially in my country, where we had a very turbulent period of, 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 of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, change of the system, change of the whole perspective of the political and economical system. So what, what would these characters do under new circumstances? And I said, all right, I will give you an answer. I will just bring them again to the screen. And I, I did it. I evoked characters of my three films, of my family life. It was shot uh, 40 years ago, then uh, Camouflage, 35 years, and uh, Constant Factor, 30 years ago. Actors were alive. I say where, because the leading actor of Camouflage died 10 days after shooting. So it is like last his last appearance, and he bids farewell to, the, to his audience because he was a very popular actor in my country, and he was quite well known in neighboring countries, speaking of Zabasiewicz. So I think it was very timely to shoot this sort of an epilogue to the previous, to the previous years. But starting with your question, what people learn, my young character tries to learn, could life make sense ever? Some young people doubt it. And I believe it, life may make sense, but there is no proof of it. It is only hope. Looking at Illumination, it was a film that asked a lot of questions that many people start to ask themselves in their 20s and 30s. For you, has, has your film, have your films been a process of self-discovery? Have you been asking yourself those questions through the movies? Well, I would say the basic questions of life, they are never answered. So only in this very unlucky case that you lose some sort of vigilance and put up with life, then you don't ask questions anymore. If not, you ask them when you're 20 and when you're 70, 
questions are the same about the sense of our activity, about why I wake up in the morning and why I take any decision and I do something, because the natural would be to do nothing. However, we are somehow prompted by something to do, to work, to act, to meet people, to tell them, to ask questions to ourselves. This is a permanent process. As long as we are alive, we must ask questions. Some people found that life is a fatal sexually transmitted <laughs> disease, <laughs> that the protagonist actually did seem to get answers, whereas in your earlier films, they were more open-ended. So did you, was that because you feel a bit more confident? Well, yes, probably yes, because it is that time where, where one has to make some final, well, it's not decisions, but to take some judgment and say what was wrong and what was right in my life. And in Life as a Fatal, uh, uh, as a fatal Disease, I thought I will bring the vision of religious peace that my protagonist finds at the end. That means he feels that there is some superior intelligence, that there is somebody above us, and then death is not so traumatic as it is if there is nothing behind this moment. So that was the only, but I think in Illumination there is lots of hope that there is something behind this black screen that is the end of our life. I think in Polish film there are certain directors like Wajda who, who are very much political directors. I think in your films, in the films of Kislowski, politics almost seems like a metaphor for something bigger a lot of the time. Well, I would say it's a waste if we use art for such a pedestrian uh, problem as po that politics poses. There are bigger issues than politics and I think I, I stick to it. However, there was a time when a very repressive system forced us to take sides, but they were not political sides, they were just ethical sides. We were against corruption, we were against hypocrisy, we were against the old falsity of the system, but not that we were choosing some particular solutions to, for, to our society, that's something which that political, the politicians should be bother, should bother about. Which is more problematic for an artist, a repressive government or untrammeled capitalism? Well, I would say, it, the, my question would be what is better for the society, for the growth of humanity. And then I know that the repressive system is slowing down every growth. So it is bad, it is evil, but when you are living in a society of consumerism and when you have this abundance of goods, human beings degradate very easily, so artist has to wake them up and wake up himself because we are also very corruptible. Artists are not any better than the rest of the society. Now you are teaching film and uh, very much these days that you know one of the paradigms of filmmaking the, the mainstream Hollywood formula filmmaking is so successful do you feel that for the new generation of filmmakers that has its uses or do you try and teach them otherwise because it seems sometimes that it it makes it almost impossible to say some of the things that you were saying in your early films and some of the approaches you were taking well, I wouldn't like to tell anybody what to say. I rather try to suggest how to say and then let them choose. But basic life questions are even present in some of Hollywood films. However, they are using usually a very simplistic language. Not always, but some, most of the times. And then you address the mass audience. So you have to ask yourself whom you want to address and what is the role of the elite in the society. I think we have a good experience, especially in Europe, to understand that every movement is started by a small minority. So if I address a small minority, I am with the winners, I am with the people of future. So why don't I do it? I, 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 I don't mind reaching smaller audience if this is a very selected audience. When Christoph Kislowski was in Hon Hong Kong shortly before his death, he seemed kind of depressed. He, he kind of seemed to be feeling that um, what he had wanted to say with film ultimately couldn't be said with film. And you've also taken on very difficult things to deal with in film. In the end, do you think that film can deal with these questions of the soul and metaphysics and philosophy? I deeply believe it can. I cannot say I can do it. 
But I see other people who are doing it, and I think Kishlovsky, who did a lot, and he said things that nobody ever has told before him. So it is always a painful process, and there is always some disappointment. And I think any artist in history would have shared the same feeling of disappointment, because the ideal is so high that what we realize is never as good as what we expected. We're overwhelmed with the visual image now. There are music videos, there's YouTube, there's short videos everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I, in the end, uh, are you optimistic that people are still going to rise above the mass and make special things with it, or are we just going to be oversated by it eventually? Well, I, I am optimistic, but that's rather a question of my character and not of the, of the reality. My perception of reality is optimistic, I think humanity is in the process of growth and it's unprecedented growth. Such enormous mass of people has reached now quite big level of, of, of development. But of course some things are lost in this process. Then maybe they will be found again. I hope we did.